last one would be about coordinate geometry. Now, our company is MyOnlinePrep.com, and my name is Jesse Kolber. With no further introduction, let's talk some shop here. Now, with coordinate geometry, we have the XY axis. We know that the XY axis both meet each other at 90 degrees. This symbol here represents perpendicular. We know it's 90 degrees. We do know the X axis is horizontal, and the Y axis is vertical. Those are good, important, basic facts to understand. We also need to understand how to plot points. For example, we have A, which is located at negative 3, 2. We have B, which is located at 2, 5. And now we also have C, which will be 4, negative 1. Notice that the first value will be our x, and our second value will be our y. A is negative 3, 2. If we move left on the x-axis, which is in a negative direction, 3, and we move up 2, we land at y. With B, we move 2, 5. We know that both are positive, so we're going to go right, 2, and up 5 for our x and our y. And C, we know we have 4, negative 1, so our x is positive, 4, but our y is negative, and we move down 1. Now, moving forward here, we're going to take a look at a few terms. First, we're going to start with a line. Now, a line we know as a function that goes on continuously in two directions forever. We're also going to talk about a ray. Now, a ray starts at one point and continues in one direction infinitely. Now, let's take a quick look at a line segment. Now, a line segment starts at one point and terminates at another. So as we can see here, the line segment AB equals 6. The x value of point A is negative 4. The x value of point B is positive 2. From negative 4 to 2 is a positive distance of 6. Fair. Let's take a look at a really important equation we need to know for the coordinate geometry. Now, I honestly think that the best way to learn the SATs is to really understand the true meaning of why the equation is what it is, answering that little child's question, why. Now, first we have the average of the x's followed by the average of the y's. Now, when we look at the average of the x's and the average of the y's, it really helps to look at an xy graph and make sense of it all. So we're going to plot a at point one, one b at 0.35, and see how this all works out for us. Now, now that we have both points finally plotted, we can note that the x value of point A is 1. The x value of point B is 3. So we can draw the line x equals 1. We can draw the line x equals 3. And we know that between those two points will be the x value of our midpoint which the average of 1 and 3 is 2, so we can assume it will be on the 2 line, x equals 2. Now we need to determine the y value. The y value of b is 5. The y value of a is 1. The average of 5 and 1 is 3. So now we can assume that the y value of the midpoint will be 3. Let's take a look at this equation again. The midpoint formula. Average of the x's average of the y's. So the midpoint formula is the average of the x's, comma, the average of the y's. Now, we're going to plug in the point 1 plus 5 over 2, 1 plus 3 over 2, and we end up with our point C being 2, 3. And there it is plotted at 2, comma, 3. Moving forward, we also need to know the distance formula for the test. Now, the distance formula is very important because it's related to the Pythagorean theorem. Now, how does it relate to the Pythagorean theorem? Well, first of all, let's take a, take a look at the equation itself. Now, when you're dealing with so much algebra, it's always good to write down the equation to avoid making careless mistakes. Now, we look at point A equals 1, 1, and B equals 5, 4. Well, fine. Let's plot those points quickly on the x-y axis, and let's take a look at the equation in greater depth. Now, D equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Fair enough. So we can assume that x2, since it's 5, and x1, since it's 1, is 5 minus 1 squared, y2 is 4, and y1 is 1, 4 minus 1 squared. We take that, we get square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. Take that, square root of 16 plus 9, square root of 25. We can say that the distance is 5. This is related to Pythagorean theorem, and in fact, the distance formula forces a right triangle onto the x-y axis. It's important to note that and understand exactly how that works. So let's take a look at that. Here's the line, which will be our hypotenuse. But to find that, we need to create a right triangle and use Pythagorean theorem. And as you can see, ABC is 3, 4, 5. The distance between our x 
is 4, our y is 3, and our hypotenuse is 5. Now, moving along, we're going to sum up our equations. Remembering that the distance formula is related to Pythagorean theorem, which is why we know that the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all in the square root, is identical to saying that c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we also want to remember that the midpoint formula is the average of the x's comma the average of the y's. And that's a nice way to remember the equation. So we have the average of the x's, the average of the y's. And we're going to take a look at lines now. We have y equals mx plus b, the classic line equation. Let's break, down these, let's break down these different variables here. First of all, we have xy. Now, xy we know to be a point on the line. And we have m, which is going to be our slope. We have b, which is our y-intercept. Now, these are all very important things to know. The SAT and the ACT both love lines. And it's, it's really important to understand them inside out. Let's take a closer look. Now, first of all, we know that a line is also called a linear function. But it's easier to think of it as a line. And we really need to know how to find slope. This is an absolute pop topic. Every test asks about it. You have to know what it is. Now, m is our slope. It equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is the same as rise over run. If you're looking at something visually, this is really helpful when you're looking at a graph. Or we can use the chemistry favorite delta y over delta x, where a triangle represents change in a value. So the change in y over the change in x. Enough with that crapola. Let's try it. Now, we have point A located at 1, 1. We have point B located at 3, 5. So let's plug in these points. So now, let's take our y2 minus y1, which is 5 minus 1, over our x2 minus x1, which is 3 minus 1, which gives us 4 over 2, which reduces to 2. We can now say that m equals 2, which is our slope. Fair enough. Now, important things to know about slopes. Well, first of all, vertical lines have an undefined slope. Horizontal lines, on the other hand, have a zero slope. Now, to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. And let's see that worked out. When x is 0, y is simply equals 4. Fair enough. There it is. 0 comma 4 is the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. And when we work that out, as you can see, we get x equals negative 2, which shows us that on the x-axis, the x-intercept is negative 2, 0. Remembering that if we want to find the x-intercept, we have to make the y-value 0. We don't want to go up or down. We want to be right on the x-axis. To find the y-intercept, we don't want to go left or right. We want to be right on the y-axis. Fair enough. Now, we want to talk about terms they always use on this test. They always use the word constant, which means the values will stay the same. The x and y-intercepts are constants. As you can see, they'll never change. They always stay the same. Another constant is our slope, as we can see there. the slope will absolutely stay the same the entire time. Now, as far as variables are concerned, we know that they will always change, and our x and our y are the variables. They'll go up and down the line and change consistently. There's not only one variable, but there's a series of variables. And that is our first coordinate geometry lesson.